action tasks that I've set you previously and also talk you through two new tasks that I'd like you to carry out. Um, um, I'd like you to start saving your work in a new place, please. Um, what I've done is I've set the work on assignments so that you get much more direct feedback when they get the work from you. And it also means all the work is in one place and much easier for me to mark. I am really concerned about the amount of work that I'm getting from you guys. I really hope that you're doing it, that you've just saved it, and I'm not sure how to hand it in for me. So this should make things easier. Task one to four of the isolation tasks, you should have already done. If you haven't, they don't take a very long time, but they do go towards 60% of your final grade. So remember, I need to see evidence of work. It's really, really important that you give me that evidence so I can start marking you. So now I'm going to show you how to submit your work. This is so that I can mark it and it will generate a mark sheet for me. It'll be much easier for me to keep track. Some of you are using sketchbooks to produce your work. That's fine, you can keep using your sketchbooks, but I also need to see the actual photographs. I don't want the excuse that you can't print them out yet. If you can't print them out yet, you still need to take a, a screenshot or upload your photos and show you them so I can see them. So what you're going to do is you'll go to your class team, which is 10C, and on the posts, you'll be able to view the assignment. You should have seen assignments through other subjects as well. You should be getting used to this concept. And you'll see something like this. So you will click on this class notebook page and it tells you to take a screenshot or photograph your sketchbook work for isolation tasks one and two. It's as simple as that. So all you need to do is edit the notebook, right click, insert your pictures or go to where your work was previously and screenshot it that way. It's really not tricky to do but if you do get stuck, if you can't see it, then contact me. Don't just leave it. I'm here to help you. I'm here to support you. And I'm here to collect the evidence so that you get the mark that you deserve at the end of this course. So don't just ignore this. If I don't see this work, when I come to market on Wednesday next week, I will be calling home to find out what's gone wrong. It's much better to contact me beforehand, please. The other thing to consider when you're doing your work is what grade you will get for the standard of your work. So I have included a rubric so you can look at that before you submit your work. If you remember previously, you've all got a target grade or an indicated grade, I should say. Um, so what I've done is tried to explain what to do to get particular grades. So a level seven and above, the photos are creative, skillful, and unique whereas if we look uh, back down towards a grade three there might be blurry photos included in your collection they might be under or overexposed and they're not very well thought out your composition might not be very good and the subject matter might be boring so you can also look at the number of photos that you've taken and perhaps consider whether you would like to take some more if you only take five photos per task you'll only be getting a grade four so it's important to push yourselves. So the first task is to take photos using Google Animals 3D. And there is a video on the next slide showing you how to do that. We've discussed previously in other projects how the photos you take should be interesting, should tell a story. So Try and make the photos funny or include some kind of a scenario. Don't just snap around once you've got the animal up on your um, camera. When you finish taking the photos, please upload them. Um, and then I'd like you to screenshot where you've uploaded them and save them into the class notebook, which is going to be explained to you in a, another video. Um,
For your second task, I'd like you to make a viewfinder out of things that you can find at home and take photographs through it. So, for example, on the top row, I've used note paper and on the bottom row, I've used a empty toilet roll. Um, the point is you make the paper into a tube or you just use the, the toilet roll and you are searching for interesting compositions. Um, what this also does is conceals what's left in the rest of the picture as well. Um, so try and find some interesting shots. You might want to be metaphorical and try and link them to concealment in some way. So for example, I've got a door handle and a keyhole, um, but really the way you take this photo is concealment in, this, in itself. Um, so have some fun doing that. Upload those to your isolation folder and um, I look forward to seeing them after the Easter break. This next task is about photographing collections of things. So the things could be objects, it could be large things outside, like you can see in the examples, we've got houses and structures. It could be small things like jewellery, but it's about collecting pictures of similar objects and then presenting them together like a collection. I appreciate sometimes it's fairly tricky to think of things to have ideas. So I've got a list on the right hand side of things that you could possibly photograph, but you don't have to use my list. You could choose your own one. Um, you could also choose exactly the same object and photograph it numerous times, but with some kind of change. An example of that is with the uh, piece of bread below that's been toasted. You could do cups of tea that have been brewed for longer, that kind of thing. The fourth task is to find objects in your home that's got typography on. So, for example, food packaging, books, magazines, newspapers, um, and you're going to find letters to spell out the word concealment. So you'll need to do a bit of zooming in and a bit of cropping in order to make the word happen. Try and um, when you present the word, try and present it as the whole word. Task five is to attempt to conceal your lens, but in a way that will still take a photo. I've got a few examples over the next couple of slides, and I've chosen to use the same subject matter. So I've taken photos of my dog in different ways. I'd like you to try and use things like cling film. You might have some see-through sweet wrappers or food wrappers that you could be using. You don't only have to use see-through objects like the plastic drink bottle on the left. You could look at using things that will actually hide part of the picture. So, for example, I've used the shelf in my oven and I've got the baking paper, which works quite nicely because it creates a lot of blur, but also picks up the um, colours in the picture. You can also look at using different types of glasses and there will be a difference between filling the glass with water or having the glass empty. So the pictures on the left are from a glass filled with water and you can see that the distortions are quite different. You get some bubbles in the glass filled with water and you also get lots of stretching. With the empty glass, you get the glass distorting in a different way. So experiment with the different materials you've got in your own home. For task six, I want you to play around with a glass again, but this time I want you to look at how the image turns upside down in the water, depending on how far away you have the background and uh, your camera lens. So you need to play around with that sense of distance between the glass, the background and the camera lens. You can try and line up the horizon line if you've got a horizon line in the picture. You can look at creating amusing spectacles as well if you want to. If you'd like to stick to landscapes or objects, that's absolutely fine too. The glass distortion actually works really well in portraiture. You need to hold the glass very close to the person's face who you are photographing. Obviously take care not to bash them with it or spill water on them. Um, but you can get some quite amusing effects. If you don't want to take a selfie, 
that's absolutely fine. I've got no problem with that. What you could experiment with is getting a photo up on a screen and holding the glass to that. You might need somebody to help you hold the glass so that you don't drop it. If you are going to hold the glass near a screen, be really, really careful not to drop your glass or any water on uh, computers or, or, or screens because I don't want any parents getting upset. Once you've taken the photos, again, please screenshot where you've saved them and then upload them to the class notebook that's going to be available to you through assignments.